No. So some time ago, I got an idea of taking my little llama head logo slash mascot slash whatever you want to call it model and making a coat hanger out of it. Sticking his nose up in the air and hanging coats and towels. I did a towel rack too. The thing is, is doing it, I quickly normally work in like Fusion 360, often go into a mesh mixer, that kind of thing. Found it very difficult to just literally cut the back of it off cleanly, quickly, easily, and put a screw hole through his forehead. When I finally came to the conclusion that why not just use Tinkercad? It's so much easier, it's so much faster, everything loads. And as long as your your base model, your starting model, is a low enough poly count, you import it into Tinkercad, do a quick cut off the back, add the screw hole, boom, done. So that's what I'm gonna show you is under certain cases, the simplest tool, a Tinkercad over a Fusion 360, will actually work better. Fusion 360, importing it, going through, fixing the mesh, turning it into the proper file it can work at, takes longer than it took me to do all the work I needed to do in Tinkercad. Let's go to the uh, computer over here and I'll show you. Here we are in Tinkercad. As you can see, I've already done it, obviously. This is basically what I did. I'm actually going to walk you through doing it. So, i got to make a new item. i got to remember how to make a new item. New design. And the first thing you got to do is import. Use a file. Now you can get it from a URL. I happen to have it on my desktop. It's fairly small. And you import it, and it may take a minute. All right, there we go. It did take a while. It's just unusually long. I have a feeling it's just because my internet's slow today. So the first thing you want to do is make it a little bit bigger. So let's stretch it. If you hold the shift key, as you stretch it up, it'll make it a little bigger. I don't remember how big I made it, but let's just pretend that's good enough. Let's actually go a little bigger. All right, the first thing I want to do is cut the back off a little cleaner. As you can see, I already have it flat for printing, but I want it a little more cut off. So let's bring in a whole box, shrink it down to here, make sure it's big enough. The first thing I'm going to do now is select them both and align them this way. All right, close enough. Now I can take this and I'm going to spin it. There we go. And spin a little more, I guess. about where I want it and then lower it down into the cut as you can see that takes off a little bit more of the back so it's got a little bit more wall gripping and then we take a cylinder and we drag it in here and we make it much smaller and I want that about 4.5 millimeters and 4.5 millimeters and drag it way up so we know it cuts all the way through look from the top drag it over until we get it where we want it so that looks like a pretty decent spot for a screw hole Then what we're going to do, we're going to select it, 
in the hole and once again align them I don't think I went that far over but yeah I think I'm done with that I think I'm gonna bring this back this way a little ways Oops, keep going the wrong way. Zoom in a little, grab it, bring it this way. Let's try aligning it again. This time, all I want to do is align it this way. There we go. And that's your basic screw hole, but I want to do an inset screw hole. So I'm going to bring another one in. I am going to make it like about nine or ten. Let's go with ten and ten. Oops, ten. And then we're going to grab this one so it doesn't move, and then that one. And we're going to align them again. And we want to align it this way and this way. And we want it aligned to the tops. Because what I want to do is have this head come in and make a, a pocket for the head of the screw. So now I'm going to group them. And let's realign it because that was stupid of me. I wish they'd align better when they align them. Most other programs, the only thing I don't like about Tinkercad, most other programs, whichever one I select first is planetary. It does not move. So when you select the other one, it goes to it, where this is kind of, it averages out the middle of it, which is kind of weird. And then I just slide it over where I really, really want it. Put you up in the top. Oops, what happened? Slide it over where I really, really want it. That looks about right. Actually, I think I'll go a little farther over. More like right around there. And I can see this is poking through the ears. So I want to bring it down a little. No, not a two. How much of that is cutting off? Oh, that's plenty. And there you have it. All we need now, select all, combine it. And it'll take a minute to calculate, and boom, there you go. I have a screw hole going through my llama. Export it out and then print it. You can do an STL, an object, an SVG. Obviously, STL for printing. So there you go. Using Tinkercad, I quickly cut off the bottom of it, put a screw hole in it, and even though it seems kind of drawn out, it was less than 10 minutes all that time. Slice it up, print it up, and you're out. Working in something like Fusion or Mesh Mixer, I find it more difficult and more confusing and just generally takes longer to import into Fusion, make it a, a model that you can work in in Fusion, then edit it, then export it out. It, just, it takes forever. Mesh Mixer is a little bit faster, but I'm not great with Mesh Mixer. So, so there you go. Sometimes you use the simpler tool, the one you know to do a simple thing is better what you end up with or what I ended up with was some nice hat racks which I'll show you a picture of and I actually did a towel rack with like a little backsplash and printed out a nice protopasta mermaid green teal whatever they call it it came out really pretty and I'll show you a picture of that here or there or over there or down there or around there anyway there you go sometimes using a simple tool gets the job done just as good and sometimes faster and easier. Depends on what works for you.